Um, so again, uh, this talk uh, here is, called, is talking all about your ideal client. Well, hopefully today, if you're not being, if you're not as clear as you thought as you have been in the past about who your ideal client is, hopefully this is going to be the the, the one class that that this actually can help you ex, uh, start um, becoming more clear on who that person is, so that you can actually start um, uh, building your business. Um, so let's go ahead and get started now. Um, just out of uh, if you want to uh, put in the chat, uh, describe who uh, your, your current ideal client is. Just use like one or two uh, adjectives as to what, what kind of person that you that you are currently working with. And Monica says a beginner assisted living owner. Okay. That can be an interesting business. I've, I've known uh, one person that, that did assisted living. Okay, overwhelmed small business owners. So, Catherine, um, you work with uh, overwhelmed small business owners? So, thank you. Well, maybe we should maybe we should uh, have a one on one uh, after this call because um, I'm also working with uh, with those kinds of people. Mr. D Denise has uh, ADHD solopreneurs. Okay, interesting. And, and the other gentleman, us. Steven says, small business owners that are looking for strategies to market, grow, and scale their company. Fantastic. And now, what you uh, now see, what you're going to be learning uh, today uh, from this course, hopefully, you can, you can possibly even start implementing that into your current business, so that, that they can actually uh, grow their businesses without really having to create anything e extra or new. Now, we'll be talking about that in a uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is right now I'm going, I'm going to again sh uh, share my screen. I'm going to use my Microsoft Word here, uh, just so I can get some uh, some information out to you. Now, these notes that I'm taking here, I will make it available at the end of the call for anybody that that, that wants them. I will actually just um, um, put them into the in, into the chat. So, uh, so when we talk about ideal clients. Essentially, with that, uh, the, the, there's different names that and there's different uh, definitions uh, for these people. Some of you may have heard that this is your uh, uh, your avatar, and some of you other ones may have heard of uh, of other ones. Now, in my trainings, if you take any of my trainings, like the Roadmap for Business Success course, I, I'm actually I call them something different. I call them your specific audience. And the reason I do that is by saying the word specific audience, that means you have to be very specific. Now, this is a thing that a lot of a different, a lot of uh, especially newer business owners fail to do is that when they actually start, um, I want to make sure I didn't highlight that, uh, that, when they actually start to build their business, they're often just too general. What basically what that what that means is they may say, "Oh, well, my business, my client is I want to help everyone," or they may say something like, "Everyone can benefit from what I do." Now, the problem is, with that is if you help everyone, maybe you, you some of you have heard this. If you help everyone, you actually help no no one. That's because whenever you are actually doing your marketing, you're going to be too, you're going to be too generic in your marketing, and that basically means uh, if you're too general, that means you're being too vague. 
And that's the and that's the problem that a lot of business owners fall into. I, I, when I was in uh, Las Vegas, I actually ran a a, a a real estate investment company, and I was working with say uh, working or uh, with some say newer realtors, and I and I would come up to a realtor and says, "Who who's your ideal client?" And they say, "Anybody that buys or sells real estate." I go, or that wants to buy and sell real estate. Like, well, that's what every single realtor is going to say. What's going to, and I have to ask them, what is unique about you? Why are you the person to go to? And they they can't answer that question. Then they need to start uh, sitting down and start figuring out what they the, what they do differently. Because at that point, they uh, if they're if they're if they're just helping uh, anybody, then again, we're they're are actually being too vague. And when they're being too vague, that means nobody will say that that's me. So whenever you're doing your marketing, you have to, the, the person that you're marketing to has to say, that's, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's who I am. That's me. Now, uh, if you do, and, and the other thing is, if you do attract someone, find a, Often that person will very soon they will actually turn away. They will actually um, they will not stick very long. So the thing is, you have to be able not only to attract them, but also to be able to help make sure that they stick with you. Um, so here's here's some ways that you what you can do to help narrow your specific audience down. Now there's two different parts to a specific audience. Two. Okay. I D E N C. Number one is going to be the, the, what the, this is going to be the, 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 the labels, control Z. These are going to be the, the, the labels that you give to them. And then, secondly, it's going to the second part is going to be their own self defined labels. And we're going to go more into that here in just a, in, in just uh, in just a moment. So here are some of the labels that you can actually give them. This is the part one labels you give to them. Number one, the first one that you that you could be um, that could be their gender. So that basically means uh, what gender are they? This could be, are they male or possibly female or, or maybe they're transgender. Maybe that's who your ideal client is, or maybe who is the, um, um, or they're non-binary. These are all different examples of, of genders that, that they could be uh, classifying themselves with. Now, <clears throat> Now here's um, now here's something that that you may you guys may find uh, kind of interesting. I'm going to... Now I'm going to play a video. I have not tested this out before. I'm going to, but I'm going to play a video real quick that you guys may have not, or may or may have not seen. It's about a minute and a half long. It's not one of my videos. I, I wasn't the one uh, that created it. And I want to make sure that the audio does play. Now, uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you uh, to let me know if uh, the audio is working. I'm going to just hit the share sound, okay. and I'm going to play this video. And sometimes it feels like it's yeah, right up on it. me. Steve, so can you hear it? Yes, I can hear it. Okay, thank you. And... I can just feel it, like literally feel it in my head and it's relentless. And I don't know if it's gonna stop. I mean, that's the thing that scares me the most is that I don't know if it's ever gonna stop. Yeah. Well, you do have a nail in your head. It is not about the nail. Are you sure? Because, I mean, I'll bet if we got that out of there. Stop would... trying to fix it. No, I'm not trying to fix it. I'm just pointing out that maybe the nail is causing. You always do this. You always try to fix things when what I really need is for you to just listen. No, see, I don't think that is what you need. I think what you need is to get the nail See, you're out. not even listening now. Okay, fine. I will listen. Fine. It's just 
sometimes it's like there's this achy, I don't know what it is. And I'm not sleeping very well at all. And all my sweaters are snagged. I mean, all of them. Yeah, I, that sounds really hard. It is. Thank you. Ow! Oh, come on! Ow. If you would just don't try to see things my way. Do I have? No, has anybody seen that video before? Yes, I've seen that. Nope, I haven't. Now, I, I this video, as you can see, is uh, like uh, is over ten years ago. That's <laughs> when they when they posted that. But one of the things when you're talking about gender, men have a tendency to want to fix things, while women has a have a tendency to only that want to be heard. And this is, is a that video was a classic example of you know of what I just said there. So when you're doing your marketing, you, if you're going to be marketing to a male or a, or to a female, you want to make sure that you are ta uh, talking to them in the right kind of language. So this this is one this is all part of the label that, that you can be uh, giving people. Now, another label that you may have is going to be their age or their age range. Now, now I did a little research on this right before this call, and I just wanted to, to, to break this down a little bit. The, the, the people that were born in 1901 to 1924 that are still possibly alive were part of the what was known as the greatest generation. The people born after 1925 or 1925 and to 1945, these people were known as the silent generation. 1946 to 1964, and this is after uh, the, the war, they were called the baby boom, uh, boomers. 1965 to 1979 are, are basically known as Generation X. 1980 to 1994. These are people that were known Gen Y or the Millennials. I misspelled that one there. Oh. Nineteen ninety-five to um, nineteen or two thousand twelve. I don't want that. Were, were the uh, Generation Z. And 2012, which you probably are not going to be marketing to because they're going to be too young, uh, to, uh, to 2025, are known as the G Gen Alpha. So whenever you're doing your marketing or, or creating your marketing campaigns or to try to attract who your specific, uh, your specific um, audience person is, the, each of these different generations are going to have different ways that they say things. They're going to have different ways of how you going to attract them. They're going to be you, they're going to be just different and, and and looking at that. So what you want to do is whenever you're creating your um your specific audience or your ideal clients, start looking at how old they are. Um, for an example, if you were to try to market to somebody that was a, say a Gen Z, they're born in 1995, and I forget which one uh, person that, that was that way. I think it was Matt. That was uh, built uh, uh, in 1995. It's going to be completely different than somebody that was uh, born in 1946. So these are so you want to make sure that whenever you're doing your marketing campaigns or creating your avatar, so you can create your marketing campaigns, that you keep this stuff in mind. Now the next thing I want to talk about is another category would be uh, their level of income. How much money do they make? Now the thing now where we come with the level of income, uh, 
you, you, you are not to going to, you're not going to be judging how much money they make. You're just going to, when you're looking at your specific audience, you want to look at making sure that you are, uh, are targeting the right uh, level of income. As an example, if you've got a product or a project that's, oh, that say is a uh, $10,000, you're not going to be, uh, most likely, you're not going to be marketed to someone that makes $25,000 a year. It just would not make any sense. The same thing is, is true if you're, um, a, uh, if you're marketing a, a program that's say $500 and somebody that's, you know, extremely wealthy, they may not see the value in it. So you definitely want to look at their level of income and, ch and change and adjust your strategies uh, to fit that. The next one after that will be their, their marital status. Are they, uh, are they married? Widowed? Divorced? Or uh, single? So, for an example, if you whatever you're looking at, um, you definitely want to look at their their marital status as one of the categories that you're going to be uh, looking for your that ideal client. And then after that one will be their their level of education. Now there is no. Uh, now there is no uh, right or wrong here. However, you, you, again, you want to uh, take, uh, make sure that you consider that. So, as an example, if you're looking to market only to people that are medical doctors, then you definitely want to keep that and 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 then eliminate all those other people. Another one would be there. The next one would be who are their influences? Who are Now this becomes important because you want to, their influences could be uh, can actually come from a wide uh, range of people. One uh, one of them could be what is their uh, what are their religious beliefs. For an example, if you're uh, going after Christians, or you, maybe you're going after Muslims, or um, Buddhists, and. As well as, uh, and if they're Christian, they could be, may, you may also want to consider what about Catholic, uh, Greek Orthodox. So you may want to consider these as well, because the thing is, uh, the way a, even though everybody here actually believes in, in Jesus Christ, they may believe it in, in a different way. And speaking of that, there's also, this is throwing the, the, the Jewish people. So you want to keep these things in mind when you are actually uh, building this ideal client of yours. And uh, the next one after that would be, um, are they the are they the decision maker? Now, this is where I think a lot of coaches uh, fail, is that they are actually um, going after uh, these people where, the, where that person may not be able to make that financial decision. For an example, if your uh, people are have to be married and they want one up here, uh, they're they're actually married. The husband or the wife may not be able to make that decision without consulting the other person. The same thing could be true if this uh, if there were somebody that's younger or somebody uh, earlier said that they're working with people with ADHD. Um, I don't know if if, if Miss Denise's uh, was uh, was sharing there would be. And then who are the, the who are the influencers? Um, well, outside of okay, it's, uh, uh, thank you for asking that question. So an, another influencer could be uh, their uh, are they re, uh, their, their, their political beliefs? For an example, are they Republican, Democrat, Independent? or non-political. So their political beliefs of me as well. Another thing is what kind of news do they watch or do they watch the news? Are they, uh, so that could be anything that they like if they are a uh, watching uh, Fox News versus CNN. I mean, that could be also related to their political beliefs, but there's also going to be something that does influence them. Another thing will be, you know, what, what books do they read? Like for example, our, uh, my older brother he only reads sports books, while my younger brother likes a war, a, a war history, um, or they are science fiction. 
So again, these are all the all additional kinds of uh, influencers that could ha have an effect on those people. Do they belong to any clubs or organizations? Um, because those clubs or organizations, like it's saying, for example, on Meetup, I was having a conversation uh, yesterday uh, with a potential client, and he had never heard of Meetup.com. Now, the Meetup, whenever you go to a Meetup, you, uh, as you probably well know, uh, for other uh, other events that have, let's say, that meet in person, having uh, you know having a, a similar interest could also be one of their influencers. Um, let's also talk about movies, movies they watch. For example, may, do you like superhero movies? Some people may say, well, the, those are too violent. So they, they'll, be, they'll be the ones that say, I don't go to superhero movies. Romantic novels. Romantic movies. So uh, the movies and TV shows they watch could also be one of their influencers. And then we, we're talking about, are they the decision maker? Now, again, this is going to be, um, again, this is going to be, we're talking about, are they married and need to ask a spouse? So the, these are going to be uh, very important. If they are not, the, if they are the decision maker, then that needs to be factored into your uh, equation. If they're not your decision, if they are not the decision maker, then you're going to look at them, probably look at uh, consulting with their, with their spouse. Or their parent, or whomever else that um, that helps them make their uh, financial decisions. Now, um, and then of course we're going to go into what are their wants and their needs. Now, with this being said, uh, a want is something that is nice to have, while a need is something. They must have. So you want to distinguish between these two. So a want could be something like a new pair of tennis shoes, while a need could be like oxygen or uh, water to drink. So a want and a need are, are not the same. And then when you're looking at your clients as well as your potential clients, what are their wants and what are their needs and how are you going to satisfy those? Um, another one, another uh, Another possibility would be what is their sexuality? Are, are they uh, straight? Uh, LGBTQ? To, you know, um, or um, maybe they're um, uh, non-binary. And then also we're going to be looking at uh, another one could be their, what is their nationality? We have one person on the call that is from, uh, uh, that was from Indonesia. Uh, are they Indonesian? Are they American? Are they Russian? Are they a Brit or Aussie? Another one that we uh, it would be the now now these are uh, these are the different things that you can be uh, uh, labeling them. Now the second thing that we talked about was something known as self-defined labels. Now these may be labels you could give them, but these are going to be labels that people give themselves, and everybody uh, will give themselves some kind of, of labels. For an example, uh, one self-defined label could be: Are they a a a mother? Yes. Father, son, daughter, grandparent. Grandkid, grandchild. These are all different self-defined labels that somebody would give themselves. This may not be something that you would actually give to them. You may think of it uh, kind of as an afterthought, but then, uh, um, but then you definitely uh, want to look at it from their perspective. I want to go back to religion again. 
religion could be, we, we already discussed some, some of the religions above, but other ones that you may want to consider are they, they consider themselves an atheist or agnostic. And we already talked about the Christians and, uh, and Jewish and, and Muslims and, and those like that. But uh, again, what are, are do they do people or do the your client uh, self identify themselves as far as the religion is concerned? Now, again, we also we already talked about gender and sexuality, and we talked about nationality. But let's also look at their career. Their career and vocation. Are they do they do they identify as a coach? A lot of people on this call probably do consider themselves a coach, or are they a trainer, or maybe they are a nurse, doctor. Um, maybe they can a professor, maybe an entrepreneur, student. So these are different kinds of uh, self-defined labels that people would give to themselves. Another one would be uh, um, uh, their age. Now we you, you had you uh, come up with labels that, uh, that they have for that you have for them by their age, but also what do they identify themselves as? Maybe they're they consider themselves they're a, a, a twenty year or they're in, they're in their twenties, or they're a, in their fifties, or they are a senior citizen. These are all examples of self defined labels as far as the age is concerned. Then I also want to get into the personal aspect. These are self defined labels that are on, on a personal level. Maybe they would say maybe they are shy or outspoken, or maybe they are a smoker. The self defined labels uh, would be uh, they are from Vegas. Or they are an alcoholic, or let's say drug addict, recovering, or still, uh, or still actually suffering from those from those things. Maybe they identify themselves as a vegan or vegetarian. Another one could be they are an athlete, or they're overweight, or they are a blonde. or they are uh, a leader. These are other personal self-defined labels that people could give themselves. There's also maybe one that's on ownership. Now, these are just examples. There are there could be uh, many, many more, but I'm just wanting to get, get, start getting your, your ideas uh, rolling as far as this is concerned. So an ownership could be, are they a homeowner or a renter? Or they are a pet owner? or dog slash cat owner, or they, they don't identify with, uh, with a, a pet whatsoever. They, they don't think about pets because they don't have one. They could also be a Honda driver, or they could be a PC uh, uh, or Mac owner or, or Mac user. Um, and this is the same thing with, with your, your cell phone. Are they a droid or iPhone owner? And other ones could be like their hobbies. Uh, for example, for me, I'm a kayaker or a, yo a, a, a yoga student. Um, they're a guitar player. Or or any, anything that 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 um that a hobby would could be uh, classified as or, or anything that they do for fun or entertainment. Now what I'm what I'm gonna do here right now, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a, a two handouts. I'm gonna put these in the chat.
And essentially, it's, uh, essentially a lot of stuff that I just covered here, but this is good. These are going to be things that you can start uh, looking at for yourself so that you, so that you can. Um, and there, there we go. So I just put two documents uh, uh, in the chat box so you can download these uh, at your leisure. Now, what these uh, different documents do, I'm going to go and open one up so you guys can see them. And it's basically just a whole bunch of different questions. So this is the first one that's, that's just known as the specific audience. And with that, I'm going to say, you know, again, we, these are some of the things that, that we have already covered. Now, one thing I, I am going to share is that it, it, that you can, that is a can, that is a yes, you can have more than one um, a, a specific audience. You may have a specific audience that is uh, 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 male only. You may have another specific audience that is female only. The thing is, you want to start uh, doing your marketing campaigns based upon those different specific uh, specific audiences. Because here's here's the thing. Whenever you are, say, you're marketing on, say, on Facebook, how a how a woman may be attracted to a, an article that you wrote is could be very different than how a male is uh, would be attracted to an article. So we want to keep your specific audiences, um, uh, you know, as you know, as as specific as possible. This is why I don't like you. I don't I don't use ideal client or avatar. I used to, but when I became uh, started thinking about a specific audience, that made me really really think. Who is this person going to be? And, and, and by the fact that the word specific is in the is in the uh, uh, the name of the of this classification this classification of people, uh, this is this this helps with, with your uh, with you determining who they are. And this is what the specific audience on looks like. What is their gender, their age range, level of income? We talked about all this. Are they the primary or or, uh, or uh, only or secondary uh, income earner? Uh, do they have a job or are they self-employed? So this goes through a, an, an entire uh, series of questions. The second one that I put in the chat box was um, this one here, self-defined labels. So again, we just covered a few of these just a moment ago. You can see under religion, Jewish, Muslim, Catholic, agnostic, Mormon, uh, atheist. Under relationship, we can see um, the mother, father, uh, dad, father, or mother, mom, mother, dad, father. Uh, as well as their gender, uh, nationality, career, vocation. So these are all the different what things that you want to do. So what I would like for you guys to do, if you want, because uh, we still have plenty of time here, and I'm most done uh, most of my content, I would like to uh, set a, uh, see if anybody would like to spend a couple of minutes. You know, right now it is uh, ten minutes till the hour. Spend like two minutes and start filling some of these out. If you don't have a printer, just put it on a separate sheet of paper or, or type it up on your computer. Um, okay, Stephen, I'll see you in a moment. And just start coming in with who your specific audience is. And then what I would like to do is I would like, I'll, I'll go ahead and stop recording. And that way we can start sharing a little bit so that you have a clarity on who your specific audience is. So go ahead and take like two minutes. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm also going to go ahead and turn off the, the audio recording. <laughs> 